So that's the uh, Democrat ticket. Well, tonight, we're going to spend a bit of time, though, focusing on President Trump and his ongoing battle with big tech. Of course, many people credit social media with helping Donald Trump get elected in the first place. But as the 3rd of November approaches, he's turned on the tech giants. It's not a particularly new threat. Uh, here he is last year warning the big technology companies they need to be careful after he complained about them returning biased search results. Yeah, I think Google is uh, really taking advantage of a lot of people, and I think that's a very serious thing, and it's a very serious charge. I think what Google and what others are doing, if you look at what's going on at Twitter, if you look at what's going on in Facebook, uh, they better be careful because you're, you can't do that to people. You can't do it. We have tremendous, we have literally thousands and thousands of complaints coming in, and you just can't do that. So I think that Google and Twitter and Facebook, they're really treading on very, very troubled territory, and they have to be careful. It's not fair to large portions of the population. Then a couple of months ago, after Twitter began fact-checking his tweets, he went a step further, signing an executive order aimed at removing some of the legal protections given to social media platforms. We're here today to defend free speech from one of the gravest dangers it has faced in American history, frankly. A small handful of powerful social media monopolies controls a vast portion of all public and private communications. The choices that Twitter makes when it chooses to suppress, edit, blacklist, shadow, ban, are editorial decisions, pure and simple. They're editorial decisions. In those moments, Twitter ceases to be a neutral public platform and they become an editor with a viewpoint. Then last week, he signed another executive order, this time aimed at the video sharing app TikTok, which is owned by Chinese company ByteDance. The president thinks the Chinese government is using the app, uh, using the app to harvest users' data, and he wants it either sold or shut down. It can't be controlled for security reasons by China. Too big, too invasive. And here's the deal. Uh, I don't mind if, uh, whether it's Microsoft or somebody else, a big company, a secure company, very, very American company, buy it. I think we're going to have, uh, maybe a deal is going to be made. It's a great asset. It's a great asset, but it's not a great asset in the United States unless they have the approval of the United States. So it'll close down on September 15th unless Microsoft or somebody else is able to buy it and work out a deal, an appropriate deal, so the treasury of the Really, the Treasury, I guess you would say, of the United States gets a lot of money. So what is behind the ever-growing rift between President Trump and big tech? Is it genuine concerns about national security and freedom of speech? Is it an attempt to stifle criticism of him? Is it old-fashioned protectionism? Uh, we're going to talk to a, a few people over the next little while. Um, we're going to start with the BBC's China media analyst, Kerry Allen. Um, Kerry, how much is this TikTok thing really about the US-China relationship? Well, it's only a small fraction of it. I mean, Chinese and U.S. relations have really, really deteriorated in the last few years, very much ever since Trump came into power. I mean, originally there was the uh, um, the trade war between the two countries and the constant tariffs and counter-tariffs being introduced. Um, but more recently, with the COVID-19 outbreak, um, with Trump very much pointing the finger at China, calling this the Chinese virus, and then... Um, and then calling it Kung Flu, um, things have gotten very, very deeply personal. And, uh, and, and now this situation with TikTok um, and also WeChat, which is China's version of WhatsApp. And, and crucially, one of the apps that people overseas, you know, Chinese overseas, stay connected with family and friends back home. So this may also be banned as well as TikTok. People are very, very confused, very angry towards Trump, and they, they do see him very much as kind of acting in his own self-interest and, and very much being afraid of China doing well in the world. I mean, I mean, I think 10 years ago, we didn't hear about Chinese companies being on par with US companies. I mean, it was, it was common in China for people to be rushing to Apple stores to get the latest phone. Um, now you've got social media platforms in the US, in the West that are popular, that are Chinese. Um, Chinese people don't see that, they, they see this as the US being un, afraid of a bit of unfair competition. And how legitimate is the concern that because TikTok is owned by a Chinese-owned company, that user data um, could 
end up in the hands of the Chinese government? Well, there's... Well, I mean, these companies, Bobby Jones, TikTok and WeChat, they reiterate they're private companies and they say that they don't hold data on citizens overseas. Um, there's a very different situation with citizens within mainland China. So people who use these apps there, um, they have to give a lot of personal information, their ID number, for example. So uh, they know that their messages are traced. I mean, we have seen previously with TikTok, there were... Um, particularly posts that were critical of China that were suddenly uh, taken offline. We've seen evidence of that. Um, but, uh, but TikTok's um, data is kept on servers outside of China. So it's reiterated that, um, that there's no intervention whatsoever, that people can freely post. And it, it says that, again, these are, these are apps and these are platforms that um, are private and, and as competitive as other companies. Why would you put them under the spotlight so much compared to, say, US competitors. And it's not just Donald Trump. I'm, I think I'm right in saying that Joe Biden ordered all his staffers to delete TikTok from their smartphones over these concerns. So it's the, the, the whole issue around TikTok has become quite politicised. It has, yes. I mean, I've even seen in, uh, in state media, I mean, CGTN, which is uh, the official broadcaster that broadcasts overseas, it's very much been saying that China is um, very much a keyword on, you know, who's going to become president in the country. And it's literally, it's the fight to see who can attack <laughs> China the most, almost. Um, that um, that it, it shouldn't really be like this. But at the same time that, um, chi you know, both candidates have to put forward a strong argument and factor in China. Um, they have to be uh, constantly talking about yeah Chinese companies and such and and again you know China it, what I see in you know my job looking at newspapers and TV broadcasters they're saying that it's literally you know it's it's crucial to the U.S.'s economy that um, it used to be for a long time that the U.S. was number one China wasn't even number two um, historically but um, now it's a situation where um, China's in a very strong position it's managed to cure all its COVID-19 cases more or less um, it's very strong in being able to help other countries. People can get back to work. The U.S. is struggling financially and it's struggling politically. And it's, um, yeah, it's basically saying that, you know, this is not the time to be picking a fight with China. This is the time to be helping your own citizens in the country. I'm going to talk to uh, Shelley a minute, who's a technology journalist, about potential American buyers for TikTok. But I'm interested to know from you, Kerry, how how has it gone down with China? Um, President Trump telling a Chinese company that they have to sell up to an American firm or stop operating in the United States. Anna, this is really interesting. This is how it's different to WeChat. Uh, again, WeChat being like WhatsApp. Um, so TikTok um, is owned by a very young CEO, Zhang Yiming. And uh, yeah, after he signaled that he might have to divest the company, um, basically sell it to a US company, there was a lot of criticism in China. Like a lot of people basically accused him of being a sellout. There were talks of people boycotting TikTok. I mean, China's a huge country. It's got a population of 1.4 billion people. There are lots of tech geniuses. And, and prior to TikTok being launched, I remember seeing lots of very similar apps that were competitive um, very much. You know, I was wondering what's going to be the next big thing. Um, TikTok just seemed to come out of nowhere. So Chinese people can very easily boycott these products and, and a new one can spring into its place. Um, but with WeChat, this is very different. Um, so, um, so WeChat is owned by Tencent, which is a, a very, very strong company in China and historically has been um, very much the leader in social media platforms. So, you know, everybody knows Tencent companies, they trust them long term and such. If WeChat gets banned, that will be a real problem because it will cut, it will basically determine whether Chinese people go overseas to the US because they don't want to be cut off from their family. With TikTok, it's got a different demographic. It's, it's, predominantly used by young people um, and people can very much get one in its place um, but with WeChat it's used by everybody in the country I mean it's got more than 1 billion downloads so if that gets banned by the US that will be a major problem that will really rupture the relationship between the two countries and and do do Twitter and Facebook for example do they have a presence at all in China 
no, right. <laughs> not at all, no. Uh, you have to use a piece of software known as a VPN in order to access them. But normally what happens is if people um, try to search the URLs so they typed in Twitter or Facebook, um, they'll just get a, an error message displayed, error 404, which says this website cannot be displayed. And they can try this numerous times. But yeah, what's known as the Chinese, fi- the Great Firewall of China stops them from being able to access these websites. And, and with, the, uh, with, with Trump and these big Chinese tech firms, is it about muscle flexing and trade or is there any kind of back channel behind the scenes diplomacy going on with regards to human rights issues around uh, Hong Kong or other, other territories? Well, I mean, China's always used the same line with regards to in, what it sees as interference in Xinjiang, in Hong Kong, in Taiwan. It says these are Chinese territories that the US should not get involved in. It says you have absolutely no part in involving yourself in these whatsoever. Um, but what I see in relation to uh, to TikTok, to WeChat, to Huawei even before that, um, constantly just, just this broad kind of term of Chinese companies being targeted. Um, so it's really for a lot of Chinese people reading in the media and social media about these stories, they see it as xen- xenophobia. They see it as basically Trump dislikes the Chinese people, is afraid of the Chinese people doing well, and is trying to suppress them from doing well in the West. All right. Kerry Allen, BBC's China media analyst, thanks for uh, setting out that so clearly 